<laughs> you look like a, a traveling it's a circus 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 circus
you know, five boys, five kids, where you have... Break out another kid. Right. <laughs> where you not only have, you know, like, daily or weekly occurrences with things breaking on the boat, but minute, things that are breaking because of the kids. Oh, my gosh. You know, how is it... Yeah, so... Uh, how do you deal with that? You know, boat stuff's constantly breaking because it's... We're in a marine yeah. environment. You know, it's harsh. It's more stuff is broken by the kids than... Than nature. Or, or sent to J Davy Jones the locker. Like just today, <laughs> before you guys got here, um, the two year old or the three year old um, had the char plotter tore apart and was ripping the buttons off it. it took the whole so, thing off the It's like, hey, we kind of need that. <laughs> what yeah. do you do with that? <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, you know, I mean, holes in the inflatable, um, you know, electronics being mutilated, stuff like that. It happens, so you have to have patience. To, to like, you is know, that what it is? To be, like a, <laughs> to be like a Buddhist, you know, and like just breathe deep. <laughs> Pull it together. They're learning to respect the boat and how important it is to not break stuff because it's not like we can just run to Walmart or West Marine and go get and pick something up when it breaks. It's so hard to get anything, you know, logistically. So, but are you, um, like when something does break, whether it's by them or just, you know, happenstance it's going to break on a boat, are you, like, training them on how to, like, fix those? Because you're a very handy, you know, person, so are you, like, training yes. them, like, oh, yeah, fix sure. those? After the scolding if that it, them. <laughs> if it can be, if it has a chance of being repaired, we're definitely going to attempt it. Yeah. And, and um, Have Bobby, right there next our 12-year-old, he's, he's, like, a little electrical well, he's like, yeah, his little right hand. Like, he's a shadow, really. It's like taking stuff apart, fixing fans and oh, mm, yeah. pumps and he's stuff. He's so excited yeah. if something's broken, and it's he's like, can I have it? Because yeah, he wants it. to dissect it and like keep parts from it so he can Frankenstein some other thing. Yeah. So you were talking about how it's difficult sometimes, like, getting things in, like, just going to the store, going into town, sure. you're in a foreign country, you're sailing, you don't e always know where you're going to be. Yeah. So, personal question, how difficult is it to get things in the kitchen? Like, how do you feed all those mouths? Uh, oh my God. We're regulars at the local grocery store here. <laughs> oh, yeah, they laugh at me. We're in there I think like today was like day six in a Five days a week, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, five boys, they eat so much. It's a lot of rice and pasta. It's like no matter how much food you bring on the boat, they'll eat it. So we kind of yeah. learned like maybe not buy as much. Because <laughs> uh, if you just load load the boat with food, they're just going to eat it quick anyways. So. Well, I wouldn't say that, but it's more about like hiding spots. Yeah. <laughs> hiding spots. Yeah, like little stash. <laughs> savvy. Secret stashes. Yeah. Your car is your dinghy. And that in itself brings upon a lot of trials and tribulations. Oh my god. Sure. <laughs> We're very undersized in our vehicle. Yeah, so we have a, a high filled, 10 and a half foot high filled uh, rib. It's uh, basically an inflatable with a hard bottom with a 20 horsepower outboard. And we look like a, a traveling. Like you see people stare at us all the time. They're just kind of like. You know, it's funny when we look funny when like the locals here in Central America are tripping out on us. Yeah. We're all loaded down. You know, because <laughs> the kids are like. Yeah, and we could barely get on a plane. Like our days are numbered. To be functional. It's like soon, kids gain another like thirty pounds between Literally. all of them, and we're not going to be able to get on a plane. We need we need a bigger motor. <laughs> Meerkats <laughs> just like Meerkats, popped yeah. up. Looking, it's the cutest thing you ever saw. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, we'll, we'll go. We're not scared to go I, ten miles. I would somewhere be frightened. Oh yeah. One, one way to go check something out, explore. Stuff's crazy. You're raising your family on this boat. Is there any routines, rituals that keeps all a little bit grounded? Is there anything that you do every day to keep mm -hmm. the sanity intact? After everybody kind of has their their breakfast or whatever. It's not long after they're, everybody's getting in the water, so, swimming, diving. Yeah, well, Bobby gets up. He's the one, Is he's a dinghy keeper. So he, he gets up, he launches the dinghy, he um, throws the powder board over, whatever. We might all get in the boat, go surfing. We might go, you know, if we're not doing that, then the kids, they're, they're in the water, diving, 
paddle boarding, yeah, that's doing pretty... something. And um, every day is different, you know. It's 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 how boat life is. Yeah. yeah. Two days are ever the same. Adapting to the environment, though, which changes daily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like your anchor. Yeah. Like I, you know, I jumped in the water to go get the anchor two days ago, and I was like, "That's amazing! I've never seen anything like this." <laughs> like, like, how are we still here? Moved. Look at this! That was pretty intense. You know, y'all have some experience beforehand. Can y'all tell us a little bit about that? Like how your, oh, how like your first boat, your first love how on the water, go? like. Oh, my. God. Power boat, <laughs> sailboat, guy. like, oh and then, and then getting into your your boat search to get this the final. Okay. Why did this Here, experience look, happen? You know what? Shh, let me tell you. I got interrogated on our first date, and one of his questions was, "Do you think you could ever live on a sailboat and like, uh -huh. travel and like whatever?" I'm like, "Yes, hundred percent." Like I've been on a catamaran in Tahiti. <laughs> yeah. 80 footer for sure yeah, I could, I could you know? it. And he's like okay awesome and then I go and he takes me out on his boat the tank which is like this 20 what 22 what was the, the tank yeah like a 22 full foot, on gnarly boat. like gangster rig out of Miami like covered speckled in fish death like all under the gunnels you know and yeah. i'm like in my bikini and he's like we'll, we'll go scurfing and i'm like oh my god Scurf this is your boat <laughs> 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 but then that went from that to hey how do you feel about fishing to oh i'm gonna buy it and then so he really only fell in love with me when i got the grinder in my hand and i'm literally like cutting out fiberglass of this hole that we bought our first boat together, the first Amy Renee. Yeah. 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 So since she could work power tools, I figured she was worth <laughs> investing in a future. Work. But uh, yeah, so I've had boats since I was a little kid, and a young lad. had a few sailboats. I had a little twenty-seven Newport as a teenager, and then after, shortly after we were married, we we got a forty-one Coronado sloop an older 70 sailboat we had that for a few years we fixed it up and well it took us a couple a little, years to refit her did a little bit of sailing on her um didn't get to cruise long distances like we wanted to because we started having kids and that whole dream kind of well went on first the, back the puppy then the babies but it's always been there it's always been like we're gonna do it eventually and um the finally all of the stars aligned and we ended up uh <laughs> pulling the trigger last year we, we sold our house how did you decide on on this boat on this boat well this boat has five, i mean you obviously had to have some yeah. like you well, know. well 30 footer wasn't going to work obviously yeah. with, with five kids and um no we uh um, 41 was not going to work we needed something that was probably between 45 and 55 feet uh we were shopping for a boat probably at the worst possible time the yeah. boat market was insane yeah, we, we needed something that had a lot of room. Um, catamaran was out of our budget. Um, this, of this boat has five. This boat has five cabins, and we have five kids. It has more more than enough bunks. Mm, this well, was it, like, it actually has more stuff than that. I was really looking yeah. for it. Like the we were in mass roller furling. Fancy. I was like, I really didn't <laughs> didn't really want stuff like that. I didn't want a bow. Just more things to break. Yeah. yeah, all our other boats, my boats I've had had Hank on jibs, and that was just like having a a, a jib furler switching is off. just so nice. Yeah. Not have to yeah. be up on the fore deck. <laughs> just <God. laughs> my video yeah. is like, like before this. This so much better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, yeah, all like what? What was y'all's past lives like? And and what from that do you think might have influenced you to take on a crazy wild adventure such as this? I I made a living on the water. I was I've been a commercial fisherman for the last like twenty some odd years, so it's not foreign to me living on on the water and spending a lot of time on the water. And she worked with me for for a few years before we started having kids, so she's used to it too. Um, so that 
that was kind of second nature. You know, I, I wasn't worried about that. Mm -hmm. Most of the kids have been exposed to well, they've grown to up the water, water being on yeah. on our fishing boat. Having a YouTube channel is very difficult. It's hard to get noticed. What makes you keep going on this YouTube journey? It is, you're right, it is a lot of work. Always lugging a camera around with you, trying to find stuff that's interesting to film. Um, the editing process is a ton of work. You don't realize that until you start doing it. On He's the editor, I'm the, from the, I'm the cinematographer. Yeah, we're, we're stoked that there's people that are watching it and subscribing and we really appreciate that but uh, yeah the main thing is just recording our lives and having some something that we can reflect on kids can watch we've got some patrons now which is awesome and yeah. Um, yeah hopefully we can pull off the Panama Canal and going into the Pacific but that's gonna take a lot of work mm -hmm. and um, hopefully you know we get to that point where we can um, get monetized and whatever. That'd be great. That's the goal. Yeah, sure. we, we need a thousand subscribers. So if you're watching this, really Please appreciate that. Like if you subscribe. click that subscribe <laughs> button. Don't unsubscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. I, mean, I think lot. it's really cool what we are doing and like persevering through it because it's not easy. Next question. This is a little bit different. It was a little random. This was actually a question by a fellow Instagrammer, okay? And they want to know if... I've never been arrested, no. <laughs> Not that I remember. If y'all actually have a pirate protocol. Ooh. With the kids. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like wait. if you're sailing and... The some... babies go in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> number, number two, MJ, he's our line of defense. Uh, <laughs> refer to episode uh, Very, uh, 11 or something and he'll you could look up his uh, his quiver of what so they're all a bunch of savages <laughs> and I actually would be frightened of them. our first line of defense would we just bring all the kids outside and let them start fighting and you yelling get, like, amongst themselves and like and they would be <laughs> like yeah we're good we don't want we don't anything you guys have We've got some wasp spray and you need it more than we do a crossbow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't have clothes. How are they going to have money? They're not going to have food either, obviously. They have yeah. no food. Yeah. No food. <laughs> Where's y'all's favorite surf spot? So it doesn't have to be exclusive to here. It could be behind, like anywhere that y'all have been as a family surfing. Like, what's y'all's favorite spots and why? Um, as a family? As a family, yeah. probably here so far. Yeah, this this place, Bocas del Toro, has something for everybody. Yeah. For the littlest kids that are just learning how to surf to expert level professionals have traveled here to, to surf. So it's, and I mean, you can, everywhere you, all the surf breaks you can get to by boat, I mean, it's pretty, pretty sick. It's, it's pretty cool to anchor yeah. off a of point break. Yeah. And like the kids are, oh my God, this one day the kids were just like, Mom, <laughs> come on, we want to go. Like the whole lineup is just uh, like, what? They're is out there that? like there's snorkeling like, into the they're lineup. They're all on the water, like <laughs> spread out. Like there's, uh, and, and that's why I think it's like incredible that one day, dude, the kids like dive in the water and they like head out. Everyone's like head down like the surfboards, like going out like take it over this wave and yeah. it was like the cutest thing yeah. I ever did see because like all the kids were so stoked to get out there yeah and it was, was a, a full was. family was that endeavor. Was wizards or? Uh, that was a wizards? Yeah, that, yeah. Was a, that was like that was right when before the like the snow was, was like yeah. right before the swell got here. It was like shoulder high and not yeah. just jumped on the board and paddled in by right. himself. It was like a <laughs> solid day in Florida. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. So what's the what's the like the end goal, you know, with survival. like going through the canal, <laughs> like you go through the canal, you go across the Pacific, like that's the what's that's the like the dream, the destination, that's the, that's the goal. It's um, is the destination to get all the way back around, or is it destination to get over there to some specific spot? Well, I, think, go that I think far, once you, you go, well yeah, going. I think you got to keep going and you got to do the whole thing. Yeah. And then at that point, like I can't even imagine like the boys and where they would be, you know, like. I mean, that's the best education you can get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. It's, it's try not to look too 
yeah, too we far can't. ahead, you know. But and right now we're stuck here. Main, like, the main goal <laughs> right? is to just try yeah. to make enough money to make it yeah. through that canal and you know, traveling. Even though we don't have a, a mortgage and and the, the bills that you have on land, it's still expensive to feed all these yeah. kids and and the well, it's a lot. It goes to the canal. Check in and out of out of yeah. countries, you know, customs fees and stuff. So. We got to hustle. Um, we got, we yeah, we got to, we got to get our yeah. hustle on. So we're both here for hurricane season. Like, is there other places that y'all want to travel in the area? Go maybe check out San Blas. Or it might end up being here, stuck at a boat yard doing boat work. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> We don't know what the future brings. Yeah. All the activities, I mean, I'm talking about like sailing, surfing, exploring, fishing, diving, hiking. All the things. I got all this stuff listed that y'all been crazy, dude. And like, what's y'all's favorite and why? I know what this is. <laughs> um, it's, more, it's, it's more complicated than just saying surfing because obviously for me, That's surfing's my about. passion. But it's more about the journey. Right. Of, of so getting the here. sailing and getting here is probably like the most unique and, um, I mean, you can't replace that. Yeah. And, and the the passage, the rite of passage. All, all the hard work yeah. and the hard miles and the prep and the. Then you get there. And traveling like, at four knots sometimes, you know, to get somewhere like here that has these crazy mountains yeah. and jungle, on on your own. So how long have you been doing this YouTube thing? Uh, it's been about four months now. And you got like a good amount of subscribers. Like, what's Ooh, like your end goal? Close. Like, what's like the goal here? Right as of now, we got like 750 or so. Get close. We, we're trying to get to a thousand. That's when uh, you get monetized on YouTube and you can actually start making money. So come on, 200 more. <laughs> 200 more, more subscribers. Yee -yee. If you can find yes. it in you, subscribe, please. <laughs> that helps us a lot. Um, and then you start getting paid for your views and stuff. And, um, it really does. Help us a lot. So that's because, what we're striving for. That's the that's the next goal. The circle is your journey. We want to keep going. So, you know, any support we can get. Yeah. Oh man, y'all are doing a really awesome thing. It's a very different thing, and I think it's very brave. And you know what? You guys are doing it. You're making it work. And I think y'all are an inspiration to other families who. Our baby on the cuff, like, oh, look, I don't know if we could do this or whatever. You know, y'all are oh, proving man. it. Y'all are making it happen. So props to y'all. I think it's amazing. And we really respect you guys. And putting it out on YouTube, oh, man, like, throwing ourselves out there to the wolves. <laughs> you're, you're proving it. You're making it happen. So only can see you guys. <laughs> we can do it. Anybody can do it. Yeah, oh man, that's for sure. <laughs> we can do this. You can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. ESA don't have five kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you do, buy a boat. <laughs> it's the only advantage. <laughs>